Who are you? What do you do? Uh, I'm Solo Solo. I'm a music artist from Chicago. And uh, yeah, I just make like smashes. I don't know. How would you describe your music to someone who hasn't heard it before? I'd say it's like, like alternative rap, um, something more musical, um, something more hook driven, but still like just as lyrical, just as um, hard, just as energetic. Okay, and you recently dropped an EP? Yes, uh, Get a Job is out everywhere. It's been crazy, like I feel like, like I'm Solo I made like over a year ago now. And just like songs like that being on the project, mm -hmm. it just shows like how long kind of this has been like in the works. Maybe like it's been under different names at some point, but like the fact that this kind of project has been in development for so long, I'm just like so glad that it's out now, you know? Yeah, 100%. I was listening to it on my way in today. Dope. And uh, the track list, um, at least from like when I first discovered your music to now, it kind of serves as like a little timeline, like the way that the track yeah. list, because I'm Solo is is uh, the last song, and then it kind of builds up to the most recent song you've been putting out, which is Dinosaur. Yeah. Was there, is that purposeful? Yeah, I mean, I think I just wanted it, I wanted to organize it in a way where like, the familiar songs were, um, it wasn't like annoying when they came on because you've heard them before, but they were still included because they're still very much like a part of the story. Mm. Um, so yeah, like Happy Ever After and, and Losing Sleep being in the middle and then I'm Solo being at the end is kind of like I, showing people that I'm just trying to put like a button on that era. You know what okay. I mean? Like the, like the on the come up bedroom era. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we did that and now it's like, what's next? How do we, how do we keep growing? You're like you're still solo, but you're slowly getting yeah. to your full self. I exactly. love that. I love that. And so the name of it is Get a Job, yeah. and the artwork is fire. Thank I you. I saw when you were like shooting it on your story when you posted it, yeah. and then it came out, and it's like there's a there's a lot going on in the artwork. So I I got it. It pulled up right here. Can you? We'll pop it up on the screen for those watching. But can you give us a breakdown of like the inspiration, what's going on, yeah. like the symbolism behind some of this? Yeah, well, I took some inspo from like that Simpsons kind of um, shot of like Bart kind of getting in trouble in school and like having to write whatever he had to write on the word, like I will not talk or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it kind of like made me remember like, you know, those old school kind of punishments, like when you would talk in class or like do too much. And I wanted to kind of bring that energy to this cover. Um, get a job is from that from the lyric in i'm solo like they try mm -hmm. to tell me get a job and pick a realistic goal so again like an homage to that song kind of trying to put a button on that era i just wanted to show that snapshot of like that school or that work environment where people are telling you maybe not even in a malicious way mm -hmm. but just like just in case if it doesn't work out or just in case just yeah. get a job you know like Go to school, Go have, to a school. Yeah, have a plan yeah. B. Yeah, because if it doesn't work out, you don't want to be, you know, whatever. And I just feel like, you know, even if it's not malicious, even if they feel like they're being like a good friend or whatever, mm -hmm. it's like that's the type of stuff that really discourages people. A hundred percent. And so, yeah, I think uh, that's really just what I wanted to talk about was just that, like that, that environment where that con type of conversation would happen. Mm -hmm. And you being the teacher, is there any symbolism behind that? Um, yeah, yeah. No, I was just like I wanted to. I wanted to be incorporated, um, incorporated somehow. Mm. And obviously, you know, I'm not a eight year old little right, boy. Right. Um, but um, yeah, I just wanted. I wanted to to, you know, participate artistically somehow. And um, we were able to get it done. Shout out, uh, Sean, my manager. That's mm -hmm. like his little brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. there and then his friend in the black hoodie and then his little brother again and it's actually photoshopped on the phone behind the textbook yeah, love that crazy. love the little <laughs> easter egg so um what is your personal favorite song off the project man that's crazy i mean i, I feel like every song is um important to me for different reasons mm -hmm. um i would probably say i'm solo is my favorite song because it's the most personal one mm -hmm. and the one that really kicked everything off for me um I love Happy Ever After because of how like versatile it is. Um, it's, it has like that alternative rock kind of inspiration behind mm -hmm. it, and that you can clearly hear it, but it's, it doesn't sound like I'm biting anyone. So I, I love that song too, and that also did very well. Um, and then Dinosaur is like, it's just lit. Like I don't know, it's like fun. Dinosaur. Like I, I've made a lot of music recently that um, is about something, and it, it's very important for me to make songs that are about very specific things, emotions, situations. Mm -hmm. 
and dinosaur is that um it's about a turning point it's about you know everything 180 things changing um but also just the fact that it's just lit like i like it so um yeah, I'll, I'll go with I'm Solo just for the sentimental value, but besides that, I think mm -hmm. Dinosaur. So let's talk about your TikTok approach, because from what I've seen, you've approached TikTok in one of the best ways possible, even before, like in the little pre-production uh, segment we were talking about, you got up to like, like 10 TikToks a day. Yeah, I was tweaking. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> like, there's some artists out there who are putting out one, two, which is still amazing. Still good, yeah. Still amazing. The consistency is, is what's more important. Um, but what would you say to an artist who is maybe just getting on TikTok today and kind of feels like maybe it's oversaturated, maybe, you know, how do I approach things when everything's been done? Um, everything has not been done. True. There's always more. Mm -hmm. There's always more. I mean, like, I mean, I would say to any, like, artists that are kind of wondering what they can do, what type of content you guys want to make, um, look at your favorite artists. Look at the type of content that they're putting out, even if they're not making TikTok content, if they're making, if the music videos that they're making, the type of vlogs that they're making, the type of BTS, draw inspiration from that and then put that in your short form content. It's just the world that we're in right now, you're not going to like get discovered singing on the train. Mm -hmm. It's not, I don't know what type of like fairy tale, like <laughs> industry, like story that is, but like that would be really dope. But I feel like, I wish there was a TikTok when I was like 16, 15, mm -hmm. 16, just starting out making music. And so because that there is now, I feel like, you know, you can have a billboard hit from your bedroom mm -hmm. because of a video that you make. So why not make 10 a day? Right. You know, if, if that's too much, make eight, make six, make five, make one. But at the end of the day, you know, if you're not like working every day towards your goals, then, then do you even really want it? When you say like type of content that artists should be making, um, do you think it's important for artists to specifically stay in the niche of music and like putting on their music? Or do you think there's also value in like expanding who they are as a person and like letting people in to see what their hobbies are? Like if they go and they play basketball or they do sports or they skate or whatever, their, or they podcast maybe, um, something of that nature. It, do, you, do you think it's encouraged to kind of... Um, expand your horizons or do you think it's more important to stay as a music artist and put yourself on that way i would say just do whatever you want you know mm -hmm. what i mean i think like that's the best thing you can do is just do whatever you want um like when you're making content i don't feel like an artist should overthink like what's right or wrong mm -hmm. because i just feel like that and then it just becomes inauthentic like, um, when I first started making content, I was just making skits, like just pure skits, not even music related. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was the right thing to do because I had a ton of influencer friends that were like going crazy viral just off skits and like funny right. videos. And I had a, some videos like go off on TikTok, but you know, I turned a corner one day. Like I, I was talking to my now manager, Sean Cohen, and he was just like, bro, why are you making skits? Like, make music content. Like, you're a musician. I was yeah. like, duh, like, <laughs> I'm an idiot. So I started making, like, the tutorials and stuff because that was, like, the most natural thing. You know, I, I saw other people doing tutorials, but they weren't doing it in a way that was, like, very personal to me, mm. or, or at least it wasn't connecting to me specifically. Right. So I wanted to do it in a way that was more accessible. Like, this is how you mix. Mm-hmm. Whatever, like it wasn't like a big technical explanation. It was like, this is what I did. This is how I mixed this song. Blah, blah. And it, it turned into like this huge thing now. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, yeah, just do whatever you want. You know, whatever feels most natural. And I feel like that's gonna come off as most authentic. And that's all people want nowadays is like something that's real. Mm -hmm. You know, all this fucking media and influencers and celebrities and everything like we know it's an industry we know there's like a layer of it that's like fake mm -hmm. so like as long as people feel like something is real in the content that you're creating they'll gravitate towards it let me think i think i have just have two more quick questions for you like rapid yeah. fire who would be your dream feature dead or who dream feature dead or alive um wow dream feature dead or alive okay so alive I would just like love to do something with Uzi. Mm -hmm. Like I just feel like that would be such a huge full circle moment. Um, just yeah. I mean I mentioned him multiple times in the interview. Like I just think like he the way he approached his music is so like outside the box and it's always been that. It's like 
um, ever since even before like Money Longer and all that stuff. Like, yeah, it was, he's just an, an insane guy. And then like Dead, I, I don't know, like <sighs> X was crazy. Um, yeah, X. Was X and Uzi, yeah. those are great choices. Yeah. Or Juice World. Oh. oh man, oh. oh. That's yeah. Me. Man, I might have to take Juice just because he's from the crib. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're from Chicago. How could you not say Juice first? I know. I'm <laughs> tweaking out. No, yeah, I'll, I'll, Juice and Uzi, um, for sure. I, I think, um, yeah, just like created their own waves mm -hmm. respectfully and, and uh, yeah, just carved a whole new lane for people to, to mm -hmm. fill in, you know what I mean? How, how many people sounded like Uzi when Uzi first came out? How many people sounded like Endless. Juice? Endless, yeah, it's crazy. Like Still to this day. To this day. Yeah. And then last question, you want to put any of your people, of the people watching, onto your favorite spot in Chicago? Oh, yeah. If you, like, are leaving somewhere very late in the evening and you want to get some good-ass pancakes, <laughs> go to uh, Griddle 24. Right. Griddle 24 is crazy. Or go to White Palace if you're like, want to go to White Palace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Solo Solo, and I'm tapping him at 1.37 p.m. Let's get it.